This is our review for test two, and we're starting with problem 12. Uh, this problem has a rational exponent, so a fraction. We're going to change it to radical form. Remember that the denominator is the index, so this will be a cube root of 216x cubed. If you check it on your calculator, 216 is actually a perfect cube. So you can take the cube root, which is 6, it will come out from under the radical. The cube root of x cubed will be just x. So everything will actually come out from the radical. That's the answer. If you don't see that it's a perfect cube, 216, you can break it down. It's not so easy to break down but it ends in an even digit. So you could start with 2, uh, 2 times 108, and then you can keep breaking. 2 is prime, and this one is even again. So you can do 2 times 54. Now 54 is down to a number that you would know. So you can do 9 times 6, and 2 is prime, 2 is prime, 9 is some 3's, and 6 is 2 times 3. So if you go back in order, let me go over here just to have a little bit more room. With the cube root, we have three twos, that's a cube. We have three threes, that is also a cube. And we have three x's. When you're doing a cube root, you want three copies in a group. So there a two can go out. A 3 can go out, it will multiply by what's out there, and 1x can go out for this group to give you 6x. But for a number this large, I would certainly test it in the calculator first. If it's a perfect cube, it will save you some work. So our answer is 6x. Problem 13 is also in rational exponent form, so we will switch to radical form our denominator is 2 on the fraction, so that will be a square root. So we'll put it back under a radical. We don't have to write the index of 2. We have 100 r squared. These are both perfect squares. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of r squared is r. For problem 14, if we look at this, everything is multiplied. The negative 3 is times this radical which is times 2, which is times this radical. So everything is a multiplication. Rearrange it if you want. So we have negative 3 times 2, and then we have these two radicals multiplied. The negative 3 times 2 will give you negative 6. For the radicals, we could multiply them and get 200, or we could break them down as we go. 10 is 2 times 5. And 20 can be 4 times 5, and the 4 will give you 2 twos. So go into primes, do it on the side if you need to. Now, we have a square root. So we're looking for groups of two things. So our 5s make a group. 1 5 will go outside. It will multiply by the negative 6 that's out there. And these 2s make a group. The 2 will multiply by those. This 2 will have to stay. I didn't have anything to go with it. So on the outside, I have negative 30 times 2 is negative 60. Inside, all I have left is a square root of 2. For problem 15, notice we also have a multiplication, negative 4 times this radical, which is times this radical. So I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit. The negative 4 is going to be the only number I have, and I am multiplying square root of 2x and square root of 5x squared. Those can go under the same radical. And I'm just going to switch the order. I'm going to put the numbers together and the x's together, and I'll break down the x squared. All right, so we're looking for any squares in there. There is not for the numbers. There's only one copy of each of those. Uh, for the x's, we have one square. So we can take an x out for that group. It will multiply by the negative 4 to give us negative 4x on the outside. The rest we will put back together. 2 times 5 is 10, and we have 1x left over. So negative 4x times the square root of 10x. 
For problem 16, we have a binomial squared. I would write it twice and do a FOIL. So I have square root of 3 plus square root of 2 times square root of 3 plus square root of 2. So we'll do our first terms. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 will just take the radical off, which will leave you a 3. Then we'll do outside square root of 3 times square root of 2. You're going to multiply underneath the radicals, and there's nothing to simplify there, so it is going to give you square root of 6. Inside, square root of 2 times square root of 3 will also give you square root of 6. And then last, square root of 2 times square root of 2 will remove the radical, and will leave you just a 2. Now we'll combine things that are alike. The constants are alike. 3 plus 2 is 5. Also, your radicals are like, and remember we combine the number on the outside. If we don't see a number, it's a 1. So we have 1 times the square root of 6 and 1 times the square root of 6. 1 plus 1 gives us 2, and keep one copy of the square root of 6. For problem 17, we are multiplying two binomials, so we will do a FOIL method. We will multiply the first terms. 4 times negative 3 will give us negative 12. We'll go outside. We're doing 4 times 4 times the square root of 2. The 4 times the 4 will multiply to give you 16 times the square root of 2. Then we'll go inside. Square root of 2 times negative 3 will be negative 3 square root of 2. And then we'll do last, and the last terms are square root of 2 times 4 times the square root of 2. Well, your 4 is just going to be times 1, so it's going to be 4. Multiplying the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 will just remove the radical. So we're going to have 4 times 2, or an 8. Now we will combine, like terms. So negative 12 plus 8 will give us a negative 4. And the radicals can go together. They're both square root of 2. 16 minus 3 will give us 13. And keep one copy of the radical. So negative 4 plus 13 times the square root of 2. For problem 18, we're also multiplying two binomials. This is a FOIL problem. So we'll do our first term, square root of 3 times square root of 3. We'll remove the radical and just give you a 3. Then we'll do outside. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 will give us a square root of 6. Inside, negative square root of 2 times the square root of 3 will give you a negative square root of 6. And then last, so we're going to have negative. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 will just remove the radical and give you a 2. Our constants can go together. 3 minus 2 is 1. And notice that square root of 6 and minus square root of 6 are going to cancel. So our answer is 1. I didn't notice it at the beginning, but these binomials are conjugates. Conjugates are the same pieces with the opposite sign in the middle. And when you multiply them, they will cause your outside and inside to cancel. We will use those later to actually make this happen. But the answer here is a 1. Problem 19 is an addition problem. So we're going to put like radicals together. Remember, they have to have the same radican to be like radicals. So our first one and second one are like radicals. They both have square root of 5. You combine the numbers on the outside. So negative 2 plus 3 gives us a positive 1 times the square root of 5, and we don't have to write the 1. So just a square root of 5. There's nothing to go with the square root of 6, and square root of 6 doesn't simplify. If you think of the primes, it's made out of 2 times 3, so you do not have any squares in it. So this is our simplified answer. For problem 20, we are adding radicals. Right now, these are not like radicals. So we have to see if we can break the 27 down uh, to end up with ra uh, like radicals. Uh, 27, we could do 3 times 9. 
and 9 will give us two threes. So we have negative 2 times the square root, and we have three threes. We're doing a square root, so if we find a group of 2, we can take one out. So our 3 is going out. It will multiply by our negative 2 on the outside to give us negative 6 times the square root of 3. The second radical is already simplified. Uh, you cannot break the 3 down anymore, so we'll bring it down. And now they are like radicals. So you just combine the numbers on the outside. Negative 6 plus 3 will give us negative 3, and you keep one copy of the radical. For problem 21, we're subtracting radicals. Right now they are not like radicals, but 45 is pretty big, so perhaps we can break it down. Uh, we could do 9 times 5, and 9 gives us some 3. So we are going to be able to break it down. And we have two copies of the 3, so 1 will go outside. It's going to multiply by our negative 2 on the outside to give us a negative 6 times the square root of 5. We'll bring our first one down, 3 times the square root of 5. And now they're like radicals. They both have square root of 5. Combine your 3 and minus 6 to give minus 3. Keep one copy of the radical. So negative 3 times the square root of 5.